So how fast do these trains actually go? I measured the distance for one floor plank and checked how fast it would cross it. So today we're taking a look at the Pico Deutsche Bahn ICE 3. Deutsche Bahn is the National German Railway, while ICE stands for Intercity Express. It comes with four cars, two end cars, an intermediate car with a pantograph on top, and a bored bistro restaurant car. So the two end cars are pretty much identical. The only difference is inside the cab. One has an empty chair while the other one has a train driver. On top of the nose, we have the Deutsche Bahn logo, the headlights, which there are two long ones and one circular one, the windshield wiper and the window, which has a black bar in the middle and the inside is blue. And the cab window is see-through both on the top and the bottom. You can also see the cab controls molded on. On the side, we have this window that curves down. It is tinted with a glossy shiny finish to it. In the front, there is a plow along with some small details on the sides. We got the ICE logo, Intercity. And on the bottom, there's a lot of tiny text. Siemens and Adtrans, which actually manufactured this. Some more company information. And here's a view of the truck. It is colored gray. And here's what it looks like when the wheels roll. So then we have this nice red stripe it's iconic for Deutsche Bahn, which their logo is right here. Got the door in the middle with a window. Some vent detail on the bottom. And this car is a second class car. And it says the car number here, 403, is actually what class this is. Then below, there's some more information, some grid. I have no idea what this exactly means. A little molded on panel down there. Some more printed elements. Let me know in the comment section if you know what these symbols mean. And here's what the end of the car looks like. There is a gangway with a white door and some electronic connector down below. On this side, you could check out the interiors, which it does have. It's uh, pretty symmetrical. So on the roof, they actually have those two pegs that we've installed before. So one in the front and one in the back. There also is this AC unit on top with some vents on the sides. And on the bottom, you can check out how that coupler actually functions, rotates back and forth. Here's a look at the truck. This one is not powered, by the way, so it's free rolling. And this is the train driver figurine, although it's not colored exactly perfect. It's like a basic design and his hand is like hovering over the controls. So now we're going to take a look at this intermediate car. This is the one with the pantograph on one end on top. The insulators and how it connects to the pantograph to draw power from. There's this bump over here and a dip on the side while the other end just has an AC and some vents. So this pantograph is spring loaded so it goes up and down. It kind of has like three rods in the middle and a cross shape in the inside and just snaps in place. On this end, we have a door, and this is also a second-class car, and here's a view of it all along the side. So this end of the car actually uses a different connector from the end car. As you can see, it's like the teeth, kind of like a mail unit. You can see a bit of a circuit board underneath, and you would just connect these two together. So on the other side, we have this doorway and a gap, some more of these windows, and some vents on the bottom, door on the side too. So the board bistro car is the heaviest of the lot and that's because it has the motor unlike the end cars which are kind of empty inside. And on the bottom you can see there's actually holes for where the speaker is, a label with the number and here's a look at the truck. You can see there is a motor inside and it's kind of stuck like that and this truck is motored as well. So on the side we got this long window here. Here it says board bistro. Bistro in French means a small restaurant and board I guess is on board so on board restaurant. There's a four windows here on the side and a door in the middle. Some vents at the bottom and on the ends there are some insulators a little red wire connecting the two on the other side there's the four windows again the doorway here in the middle and this time it says board bistro in smaller letters some more windows so the board bistro car actually has a lot of antennas on the top of the car which we did have to install ourselves and they also have that same ac bump on the roof so I want to compare it to my Bachmann Amtrak SL Express since these two are both high-speed trains. They both have this red stripe cross as well as the red logo. You can see there's two different methods going on here. One is an EMU while the other is a locomotive. That is one main difference seen in trains all around the world. The older version of the ICE actually did use locomotives, but they have since changed to EMUs because EMUs can actually fit passengers inside the end cars and they also accelerate much faster.
So how fast do these trains actually go? I measured the distance for one floor plank and checked how fast it would cross it. For the SL Express, it went 0.57 meters in one second, which is 2 kilometers an hour, which in real life terms is 178 kilometers an hour or 110 miles per hour. Not too bad, but it does fall short of the real life SL Express maximum speed of 150 miles per hour. For the ICE-3, it went 1.45 meters per second, which is 5.2 kilometers an hour. In real life terms, it's 454 kilometers an hour or 281 miles per hour, which is quite impressive considering the max design speed of the real ICE is 330 kilometers an hour, so there is a difference of 124 kilometers an hour. So for my final thoughts, I think the Pico Ice 3 is a decent model representation. It has a fair amount of small printed details and the windows are nice and glossy. It runs fairly well, it's incredibly fast, way faster than the Bachmann SL Express, even at just 50% power. And I never had any issues with it derailing while operating it, only the motor car doesn't slide on the track when it doesn't have power. There are some improvements they can make to be more realistic, like for the interior it's all one color light blue, which if you look at the real life cab it's actually darker and green. Ray, and the train driver figure isn't painted perfectly. He has a big hole in the top of his shirt, but who knows, maybe that's just just good in Germany. Also, the nose can open, so you can't really connect it with other trains, which interesting enough, the Pico Ice 4 can, so you're just kind of limited to just using it by itself. Despite that, it's one of the most readily available high-speed trains to get an HO skill at a decent price, around $200, which I think is a pretty fair value. I bought mine from eBay from a seller in Italy. Usually it comes as a star set with track, but I didn't really want or need that. I remember when I first discovered what the ICE train was before I just called it the ICE 3. I think ICE 3 actually sounds a lot better, but I remember thinking it would just look like an egg. It was such an ugly kind of train, but it kind of grew on me over the years. And I think it's a really iconic train for Germany, so I'm glad that I got to experience it. But yeah, let me know down in the comment section what you guys think or if you have high speed trains of your own. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you hit that like button down below, subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.